Welcome to the segment of Under the Microscope. I'm Jeff Gold, and I have the great pleasure of being joined by Dr. James Weiscarver. Dr. Weiscarver is a professor of pathology and microbiology and runs our DNA testing facilities for criminal investigations. Jim, thank you so much for being with us today. I'm pleased to be here. I wonder if you tell our audience a little bit about the spectrum of services that we provide for DNA testing in the areas of criminal justice and, uh, and various law enforcement activities. Well, we provide uh, testing for a variety of agencies, uh, usually law enforcement agencies here in the eastern part of the state, uh, primarily Douglas and Sarpy counties, occasionally for, uh, also for uh, Lancaster on mm -hmm. occasion. We also do some work for the federal government, through, both through the FBI and the ATF and we occasionally do some testing for the uh, U.S. attorney who's based here in Omaha. And why do these uh, agencies, uh, law enforcement agencies predominantly, come to us, come to you for these services? Uh, I think turnaround time is the short answer. Uh, frequently they either have a suspect in custody or they have a suspect that they need to get testing done on in order to make an arrest before the subject flees. Mm -hmm. And so they need to have this done in a relatively timely fashion within a few days. And we're able to get that kind of turnaround time where some of the, the testing laboratories that do work routinely for criminal uh, casework for the state and for other agencies, uh, it takes a little longer to get those results. You know, we read a lot about the role of DNA testing in the newspapers and on TV and, and other places, but is it your feeling that the, the, the requirement for quality DNA testing is rising in this country and in our geographic area here? I do think so. I think it's nationally. It's, I think uh, attorneys and juries, I think, when the case goes to court, they expect that there's going to be DNA evidence presented if, if there are uh, items left behind at the scene that would lend themselves to that kind of testing. They expect that that's going to be done and presented to them. And when the test results are complete, do you actually get to go to court and talk about the findings? Our analysts, we have three analysts in our laboratory, and on average they go to court three to four times per year. And if you think of the volume of testing we do, that's not a lot, but frequently when presented with confronted with DNA evidence in the court uh, as part of the investigation, these uh, suspects fre frequently will agree to a plea bargain to avoid having to go to trial. Really? And is it your feeling that the laboratory work done by the university is highly respected by you know, judges and juries and uh, both prosecutors and defending attorneys? Yeah, absolutely. I think that having the university behind this, having university experts as opposed to having law enforcement experts is a big plus when they go to trial and f present it to a jury. You know, people talk a lot about that separation, what they call the arms distance relationship between the people who are actually doing the DNA testing and reporting on the results in law enforcement. Have you, in your experience, uh, found that to be the case? Yes, I do. I think they view us as much more impartial than they would say someone who works for the law enforcement agency who did the investigation. Well, that's great. Well, we're very grateful to you and to your staff for all that you do. I know that as we continue to have discussions with the city and the county and the state and others about how these forensic laboratory sciences will be uh, delivered here in our region, Everyone I go to has nothing but accolades for, for you and your team, so well done. They do a great job over there. Thank you for being with us today. It's my pleasure. And thank you for being with us today on this segment of Under the Microscope.